Hello and welcome back to the channel and in this one we're going to look at Pity Dr G's Rosemont Country Club which I believe is fourth of five on the Scottish plot. Let's go with, we'll go pin one, give Dan a taster pin set. Um, so this is the one that most people will play so it's, kind of like, it's quite a nice one to play every now and again rather than dipping into one of the maybe more change up pins. Uh, let's go medium and southwest. So Dan's we probably say the heaviest hitter on this plot. Um, so, so far we've seen Axel, Von Fersen, we've seen Honey Badger Hacker, we've seen Blind Wolf Golf, and one yet to come. Um, and Dan being one of the captains, you would kind of imagine him as the favourite, probably, to take this one. But we've seen some really good courses on this plot, so who knows. Uh, Clubhouse looks great. I like the use of the new walls, and kind of tying in this building as well is very cool. Um <laughs> That door feels like it's, I don't know, looks odd. Uh, the rest of the clubhouse looks great. Good patio, veranda area, planters, buildings correctly landscaped, which he will have spent time on. Nice rock work. And he's done a, you can, I think he's done a lot of work with the creek because this looks very fine tuned compared to how it was initially. So we've got some, oh, we've got a little walking path and a culvert kind of crossing area which I like a lot compared to a bridge that's quite nice um, some little pieces of retaining wall okay but with uh, stone wall in front of it's interesting and we've got the grasses nice mix of grasses um, okay let's zoom on up and see where we've gone so you had to keep that village but you could replace them and you have to keep the city skyline and we can see some of this off in the distance okay so he went bottom right so basically the same place where axel went i presume is that on a playoff hole i guess i would imagine so okay so then we go out you had to come back at nine which meant this plot became really tricky really quickly uh depending on where you put the clubhouse because you can only fit so many over this side and then you've got the road in between um, in Dan's case, he's kind of like, I'm going to say, did Honey Badger Hacker kind of also tree it in, whereas Axel left it open, Blind Wolf left it open. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so kind of the road isn't really in play. It's just a boundary more than anything. I mean, we always love Dan courses. They're interesting. They're thought through. They're strategic. Lots of fun. Now, there was a big amount of mounding over here, so it's interesting. And typically, Dan, he's kind of tackled that head on. Um, I don't know what's inspired this. I've not read the course um, thread or anything yet. Planting looks good. We've got nice little service area. Then you've got a village down here. And presumably something up here. Did he keep the original buildings? Hey, good as... Uh, no, so he's changed out some of the buildings as well, kept some. Hello, old elm, I see. Okay, so we've got some things over here as well. Oh, we've got a fountain. Dan's all about decoration. <coughs> Hello, speak of the devil, very much style over substance. Ooh, I like this feature a lot. Bunkers cut into hillside, loads of space over it. Oh, this, I am excited about playing that approach already. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed our tempos are just a little bit better. And I like that it's like, this feels like how this plot should be. Like, it's not completely treeless, but there's like some and you're kind of weaving through, but there's still views of Clubhouse. Like, kind of, you get the feeling of coming back to it a number of times from different parts of the plot. Excited to play this one, as always. Oh, hello, Nick, Charlie. We have all the people. Okay, and we have a lot of fairway and... Um, okay, let's get going. And we've got joined fairways as well, which makes sense, provided they're not alternate routes. Okay, so we open with a par five. Green is in... Oh, so we've got out... Is that out of bounds long? Yeah, but not too close. Okay. So we can try and go down this side we really want and does that uh, potentially so this is not breaking the hole this is a fair way he's meaning to be used but even then for this pin you got that little mound in front which is going to make it a bit trickier so maybe we want to go this way 
565, so we should be able to get there regardless. Although a shorter club would help going over there. Like this is what I like about Dan Courses. It's not really prescribing how you Yeah. Like that is an option, but it's not one that's necessarily going to be the best option. So I'm kind of thinking about where I do want to go. And kind of Oh, and we've hit the very fast out of the gate, so none of that mattered. Which is cool, because I kind of like seeing how holes like this play anyway when like, you want to see whether the second shot matters. So we've got a bunker protecting roughly what I would imagine is full wedge distance. Uh, yep, yeah, pretty much. So that pinch is there. So you can go longer, you're leaving a pitch, which I don't think I'd mind to this pin. We don't want to go too far long. I think three iron. I don't want to think about rollout. So yeah, somewhere down here is fine. Tempo is marginally better. Land movement feels great. It's just like, I imagine it's smoothed out from a bit from where it was, but there's still all of the interest remains. So he's not just put a flat brush over the whole of it. It's just like working out how you can use the contours. But you can. We have a little bit of a backstop. Really good first hole. Oh, I didn't really use the backstop. Oh, he's delighted to have found the green, so this round's going to go well if he's celebrating that. Cool view back down the creek as well. Hey! I do like the out-of-bounds and the way you've done that. Just kind of, it's there, but it's just, like, it's not really in play, I don't think. I think nice and gentle. Okay, oh, so drivable par four. Dan, as far as I remember, loves a drivable par four where it's hit less than driver and try not to go over the green. Um, okay, so we've got the mound which could take us towards this pin, so it's really tempting because I don't want to be this side because then I've got to chip over it, but it's a really helpful hazard if you're hitting that running shot in around here, so really I'll be landing it around about there. Very hard to resist this. Especially to this pin. I kind of feel this is like the pin I go for the most because I just want to be right of it. Oh, it's not a good swing. Go on, bounce over. It's not going to bounce over. No chance. See, we tried to hit a partial and it just didn't happen. Did you go? Okay. Well, at least it dropped me on the fairway. <laughs> I know, right? Typical. Still full wedge, it's not the end of the world. Oh, now we get a half decent tempo. Like, <laughs> nearly, nearly. Still, we'll take a par and we'll run. It's fine. Everything's fine. Starting 5 4 3 5 is bold. And, like, that's the cool thing about some of these plots. Like, you just, it's whatever the holes are that are the best ones there. Probably. Okay, so long par three. I mean, I think we've got a pin here. But there could be multiple others, and some of those are going to be challenging. I think I've probably got the easiest pin on the green, even though it's the furthest back. Okay. Now trying to really concentrate on tempo. Oh, please get left. Please get left. Doesn't need to be much. Two front pit instead of the ridge in front, that makes sense. It tried. It really did try. So yeah, you really have to be... And that ridge in front makes you kind of play just that little bit closer to these bunkers because you can't land it just as short. Fun. It's a cool natural feature and it's one of those par threes you'd never make anywhere else, but... That's kind of what's being suggested by the land you have. Oh, come on. There's a putt. Pretty happy to be one over, given my first few holes. One under, given my first few holes. Okay. Another par five early doors. I guess can hit over here. That's not a pin. So this out of bounds is kind of more in play if you were stupid enough to carry the ball all the way to the green. I guess you could bounce through. 
Try it just it's just close enough to make you think, but not too close where it's going to cause you that many issues. Okay, so we can end up down in that little hollow, which I guess means you've got a bit more of an obscured view. Or we can play out here and... Oh, there's some moundy stuff here. I think we'd probably take the hollow. Really have to sort my tempo out. This is not it. And it trundles down into downslope and blindness and all of those things. Okay, and green kind of flows front to back. I presume there's one pin right on the front, which would be all sorts of fun. One high, one here, probably. Uh, or I could see down in that little swale. Okay, it's up 10 feet, which means... I think I'm kind of okay with going for this. Finally, we get a tempo. Kick left, I'm hoping. Yeah, straight is where it should have gone, really. I'm okay with that as a miss. Okay, so where are we? Oh, we're on the corner there. A little rest stop, I assume. And I like the bridge work. All the important details covered. No cars. Unfortunate. Turn in just a little. Not a really good hole. Just like interesting and yeah. Good use of natural land movement to create interest rather than like necessarily the bunkering too much. Okay. Big tree to our left and then ah, all the central bunkers. More of a circular green rather than the previous ones. Too flanking. Okay, and long par four into the wind. Love the look of the bunkers in front of this. Mm, I think that's all right. Sort of an arrows with a triple fairway. Yeah, I can see it. I think with different winds, that those three central hazards play differently as well. I also like the sort of an arrows because like it's just like using that idea really. Okay. Oh, we found some tempo. Hooray. Wee. Okay. I do like the, like, sim the simplicity of, like, the tree line and planting work is really nice as well. It's not trying to be too flashy. It just is. Okay, somewhere here. Oh, that's a good pleasing birdie okay we've made it through hopefully the bad spell at the start so now you play back down so you've gone parallel and this one we're more squeezing this way ah uh, yes i'd forgotten about that i remember axel finding the same and those bunkers are cutting awkwardly particularly with this mount so i could try and hit over Ooh. oh i like this Yeah, yeah, I remember. Big elephant, and as ever, I just appreciate that there's nothing other than this. How much, um, this land short of the green, how much of it do you actually sculpt at all? Or is it just like this is literally what was there and we just soften the contours on the green? Because that's awesome. Okay, I think we try and take driver this way. Cut the notch in the middle. Okay, makes sense. Oh, that's a very hard fairway to hold. Okay, so you cut this bit. Yeah, that works. And that stance has just thrown it way right. Go and kick back in a little. Oh, it's trying. It is trying. We'll take that. Yeah, softening makes sense. I might try and putt this, even though this doesn't really work in this game. Nope, just... Thanks. Thanks, ball physics. Yeah, really cool. Very St Andrews-like, actually, that one. Nice change-up so far. 
particularly given the previous one was kind of flatter and softer and more bowly. Oh, this one had some feeder slopes. Hey, you've got a lot of hit feeder slopes on here. Okay. Oh, we've got some bold stuff on this one. I'd love to see this green without grids. But we're also not going to. I mean, it makes sense given it's a wedge shot and it's downhill and... Gotta be precise. Okay. Uh, I think here... Oh, we made it onto the right section, just not... Oh, no. Maybe we haven't. It's still going. Yeah. There's a lot going on on there. Trying to work out where else you might have one. I'm hoping you've got one in the little swale in the middle, just for fun. Uh, so, and it's just really tough if you don't hit your spot. Here we go. That'll do. I mean, quite happy with three under. Yeah, this was the tee shot I was looking forward to. Oh, we've gone blind to blind. Long par four. I'm glad that you found some longer holes on this plot as well. I'm trying to work out what's opened that up. I guess it's joining the fairways has probably helped. Yeah, as long as that... And I like that that bunker on the left is going to play way bigger given the amount of this slope there is. Obviously, we're still hitting a wedge into this. This gives me this green gives me vibes of like Axel's. I want to say fifth that goes down towards the creek. No fourth. Uh, just that fall away green. It's really cool. Yeah, I bet. Wouldn't surprise me. Now feeds back. Oh, we got a very helpful roll. I just hit that slope and the physics went funky. Still on a slightly spicy slope. That's turning past it. Plays well. Okay, and now back to the creek again, which is good because we've gone away from it for a few holes and like I think the best thing we can say about that is I haven't missed it. Okay. Also, we've got all sorts of angle potential of where you want to be for this one. I think this one I want to be over here. Yeah, so you could play over this way. I think it's generally trying to keep you on this sort of line, but you could play over here. Just that tree is going to cause issues if you do play too far that way. I think left is good. Provided we can hit drive and slow, that's oh, fine. I really like the creek planting. Like it's not doing that much, but it's the main thing is it's not overplanted, which I think it's really easy to do. Um, and would definitely consider myself someone who might do that. Um, into the wind, actually, probably just needs a little loft. And then a massively fast swing to ruin it. I'm really enjoying this. Oh, go on, there's a putt. I'm really enjoying the greens as well. Like, there's enough boldness on there, and there's enough, but it's smoothed out enough so that you still feel like any good parts are yours. Okay, so this is... Is this where Axel's 10th was? Yeah, so it goes out... Oh, kind... Yeah, yeah, it goes out the same way. Interesting. You did find very similar shots. Funnily enough, this is the hole I was basically trying to get Axel to build for the longest time, and then we gave up on it. And he went to the punch bowl literally just a bit further left. But, like, the hole you hit over here and then you're hitting over the out-of-bounds and you can see the pin through the trees, like, genuinely, we've got all of those messages, um, which is so cool. So, the nice thing, my eye is still okay. 
Hello, Axel. Um, speaking of which, Axel, this hole, your tenth hole, remember the one that I was suggesting that like we couldn't make work? This is it. So funny. Um, it's, and this is really cool for seeing this sort of stuff actually coming out. Uh, oh, I don't know if I like that. And like, literally, we even had bunker here, bunker there. Like, this was basically the idea. Fun. I don't want to be there. I want to be further left, which means taking on the out of bounds and the trees. And uh, it's risky. Okay. Nice. I feel like I've executed that shot and. That's a high tariff recovery shot. Now I'm in position to go for a birdie, which I really like. On a three-shot par five, that second shot is so important if you're not going for the green, or on two-shot par five even as well. There we go. Oh, thanks, Undertale. I appreciate that. Guys, we are playing Rosemont uh, Country Club, which is a new course by Pithy Dr. G as part of Dream Team Contest. This one's awesome. Uh, it's been really good fun so far. So yeah, got, um, if you're not aware of the contest, basically a load of designers, well, six of us made plots and passed them off to other people. And so they all had to build this, like using the same land and just find different things. This is the fourth one so far we've got on this piece of land. That is a nasty little pin. Yeah, they are bold. They've not been afraid to... Like, this is this is probably the well easily the hardest pin on this green I would say, unless maybe that one. But even then, it's got lots of helping slopes. You've just got to be accurate. I think over here and let's play for that fast and not go too far. That's not too bad. I would take that. And obviously, he's hating that chip shot as he pops it in. We'll go with this. Ooh, okay. So another kind of drivable par four. Good use of the outbounds. So if you're trying to fade it in, you have to really work it. This has shades of, oh, I get two holes kind of coming to mind here. Riviera 10, and then the, um, the road hole at Lonsdale Links. Gives me a little bit of vibes of this with how it plays right up against that tight boundary line. Both of which are awesome courses. You're in 9-iron. I'm not going 9-iron. But I could see it. I can see an argument for playing to here and just use. And I absolutely adore this hole. It's very hard to make good drivable par fours. Yeah, but I you, you're just trying to bait me into hitting a fast over here. I'm actually kind of happy just going over this way and playing for a chip, I think. I'm not saying that's the right way to play it, but I feel like that's what I feel most comfortable hitting. And I'm okay there. Yep. But I could play that hole so many different ways. And like, yeah, exactly. And like, if I'm in there, then I'm happy playing a splash, and I'm probably, like, I'm just trying to crest that slope, and then we're okay. But I feel like with that one, all I'm wanting to do is just not go out of bounds. Okay, so we've now crossed the road. Yeah, good point at which to cross the road. I like that the road has never come into play visually as well. Okay, so here we want to play left, and then you risk falling off. Generous cut of light rough is really, really appreciated. So a little fade down the left-hand side. Yeah, okay, sounds good. The um, reteaching the awards courses. All right, let's go with... I just wish that in this game this hole played longer. Because this should be a ground game approach and you're rolling it in here and that would be so much more fun. But oh well, we are where we are. Still, hopefully... We can kind of generate that a little bit. Play here. I could. I could. But then, yeah, I don't know. Turn back. Oh, it went way right at the beginning. 
Mm. I feel robbed. Okay, another... Okay, kind of shorter par four. We've got out of bounds down the right this time, so we had it left before. You've done a, a great job at using out of bounds in a way that doesn't feel forced, right? Or too in your face, but while still being present. That's really hard to do. I also appreciate that you've like made the line of charm is out here. Like often we'd see kind of people where oh on this sort of a dog logo you'd be tempted to play to here. I don't know. I do wonder whether you might get people playing into the generous cut of light rough. Like you still have to draw it around. I'm not going to. I'm going to be nice. And also I kind of want to see this one bounce down. So you could try to hold the flatter high part, or you can roll down just a little bit, or play close to the bunker. <clears throat> Probably. I don't know. That's not a good swing. Sit. Oof. Yeah, see that out of bounds, because if I'm... Pushing it just a little bit further only needs one bounce. I love the sculpting and proximity of this green to out of bounds and how you've done this. I think that works really well because you don't want someone just rolling off a green and into out of bounds. So <laughs> it's very much if they like if they hit beyond the green, they're going out of bounds. So I think it plays exactly how you'd want it to. Long par three, ooh, more of a plateau with those three bunkers. And then, okay, and then we're cutting fairway into this bunker so that that roll off goes in. That's nicely done. Just hit a good shot sometimes, don't you? Um, Sightland's great. And I could have taken on that bunker a little bit more and gotten closer to the pin, but I am happy being down here. Like, that's the one where you're playing. If you get the fast, you end up close. If not, I'm not dead. Which is all I really cared about. Long par three, I'm happy with par. I mean, this is flying through this round. Just loads of fun. Okay, back to our... Quadruple, quintuple fairway. One, two, three, four. Oh, man. and there's so many. All the spline. Oh, and another um, kind of bunkerless green complex. Well, they have some stuff short. The par five makes sense with those like little higher plateaus. I don't think I want to be right. I know. Well, yeah. Major makes us do dumb stuff, doesn't it? I think I just want to land it anywhere here and it should roll up, I hope. Down 17 feet into the winner. I think it's just like that. This feels like the shot. Now it just needs to roll up. Oh, I didn't quite have it. Shame. Okay, and you come back to the clubhouse-ish for 16. Whoosh. It's fine. We'll take a two-putt birdie. We're at our standard minus nine, which is good. Yeah, I, th I think this plot became a lot of fun eventually. Big false front. But it's not going to run you, I presume, down the whole hill. No, it kind of keeps you on the front. And you've got a little bit of a shortcut up here. About 39 feet up. So the question is, is with elevation change, are you making that? Actually, it kind of feels as over here is fine. We're not going to hit it full. Just going to bunt up this way enough to hopefully see the green. Uh, not quite enough to see the green. And then full wedge in. We're fine with this. And I can hopefully play a little long. We've got that backstop to bring us back. Beautiful. Right. 
Let's see what we got for 18. Kind of a shoot of trees feel, and then bunker and water. Loads of. I know, I know. Stupid game, isn't it? 502. Oh, I like the kind of quieter. When I say quieter, there's some big slopes on the screen, but most of, most of it feels flatter. Uh, and and also I play with the rhythm archetype, which I think is also hilarious. Oh, it's a little, it's a little eager. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Two twenty. Oh, keep coming, keep coming. Oh, I feel like it's right. It's so close. So you have that recovery shot with the big slope, but now we're just playing gentle tapper tapper. Oh, I've played too much. I mean, it's a great course. We knew that was coming. Just a load of fun to play. I'm so excited to go around and play all of the eight, uh, all eighteen on all four pins, and just like really enjoy. Yeah, Dan produced a good course. What a surprise! <laughs> it was sensible and strategically interesting. Uh, loads of fun. Like, give that a play. Enjoy. The greens are really bold. They're interesting. They're kind of a big feature of the course. But then, yeah, loved it. Anyway, 